What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Security Plus SY0 601 certification. So let's go ahead and get into it. In this video, you're going to learn about social engineering techniques such as phishing, smishing, vishing, spam, spam, spear phishing, farming, tailgating, eliciting information, dumpster diving, shoulder surfing surfing and whaling. So let's talk about phishing. So phishing, this is the fraudulent attempt to obtain sensitive information or data, such as usernames, passwords, and credit card details, or other sensitive details by impersonating oneself as a trustworthy entity in a digital communication. Phishing often directs users to enter personal information at a fake website, which matches the look and feel of the legitimate website. Next, we have smishing. So smishing, this is any kind of phishing that involves a text message. Oftentimes this form of phishing involves a text message in an SMS or a phone number. Smishing is particularly problematic because sometimes people tend to be more inclined to trust a text message than an email. Most people are aware of the security risk involved with clicking on links and emails. This is less true when it comes to text messages. Smishing uses elements of social engineering to get you to share your personal information. This tactic leverages your trust in order to obtain your information. The information a smisher is looking for can be anything from an online password to your social security number to your credit card information. Another option used by a smisher is to say that if you don't click a link and enter your personal information, that you're going to be charged per day for use of a service. If you haven't signed up for the service, go ahead and ignore the message. If you see any unauthorized charges on your credit card or debit card statement, alert your bank so they can open up an investigation so they can hopefully refund your money. Next, we have vishing or voice phishing. And this is the use of telephony, oftentimes voice over IP to conduct phishing attacks. Vishing fraudsters often use modern VoIP features such as caller ID spoofing and automated systems to impede detection by law enforcement agencies. Vishing is typically used to steal credit card numbers or other information information used in identity theft schemes from individuals. Usually vishing attacks are conducted using automated text to speech systems that direct the victim to call a number controlled by the attacker. However, some use live callers posing as an employee of a legitimate body, such as the bank, police, telephone, or internet provider. The fraudster attempts to obtain personal details and financial information regarding credit card, bank accounts, as well as personal information of the victim with the received information information, the fraudster might be able to access and empty the account or commit identity fraud. Some fraudsters may also try to persuade the victim to transfer money to another bank account or withdraw cash to be given to them directly. Callers often pose as law enforcement or as IRS employees, and scammers often target immigrants and the elderly who are coerced to wire hundreds of thousands of dollars in response to threats of arrest or deportation. Next, we have spam. So spamming is the use of messaging systems to send multiple unsolicited messages to large number of recipients for the purpose of commercial advertising, for any prohibited purpose, especially the fraudulent purpose of phishing, or simply sending the same message over and over to the same user. While the most widely recognized form of spam is that of email spam, the term is applied to similar abuses in other media, such as instant messaging spam, mobile phone messaging spam, social spam, etc. Spamming remains electronically viable because advertisers have no operating costs beyond the management of their mailing lists, servers, infrastructures, IP ranges, and domain names, and is difficult to hold senders accountable for their mass mailings. Next, we have spam or spam over instant messaging. And this is a type of spam targeting users of instant messaging services, SMS, or private messages within websites. Instant messaging systems such as WhatsApp are targets for spammers. Many instant messaging services are publicly linked to social media platforms, which may include information on the user, such as their age, sex, location, and interests. Advertisers and spammers can gather this information, sign on to the service, and send unsolicited messages, which could contain scam links, malware, or ransomware. With most services, users can report and block spam accounts or set privacy settings so only 
contacts can contact them. Spear phishing. This involves an attacker directly targeting a specific organization or person with tailored phishing communications. This is essentially the creation and sending of emails to a particular person to make the person think the email is legitimate. In contrast to bulk phishing, spear phishing attackers often gather and use personal information about their target to increase their probability of success of the attack. Spear phishing typically targets executives or those that work in financial departments that have access to the organization's sensitive financial data and services. Next, we have farming, and this is a cyber attack intended to redirect the website's traffic to another fake site by installing a malicious program on the computer. Farming can be conducted either by changing the host file on the victim's computer or by exploitation of a vulnerability in DNS server software. DNS servers are responsible for resolving internet names into their real IP addresses. Compromised DNS servers are sometimes referred to as poison. Farming requires unprotected access to target a computer, such as altering a customer's home computer rather than a corporate business server. Next, we have tailgating, and this is a common social engineering attack known as piggybacking that involves attackers seeking entry to a restricted area without proper authentication. In it, the perpetrators can simply follow an authorized person into a restricted location. They can impersonate delivery men carrying tons of packages, waiting for an employee to open the door. They can ask the un knowing target to hold the door, then bypass security measures like electronic access controls. Next, we have eliciting information, and this is the subtle extraction of information during an apparently normal and innocent conversation. Most intelligent operatives are well-trained to take advantage of professional or social opportunities to interact with persons who have access to classified or other protected information. Conducted by a skillful intelligence collector, elicitation appears to be normal social or professional conversation and can occur anywhere such as a restaurant, conference, a visit to one's home, etc. But it is a conversation with a purpose to collect information about your work or to collect assessment information about you or your colleagues. Elicitation may involve a cover story or pretext to explain why questions are being asked. Some elicitation efforts can be pretty aggressive, imaginative, or involve extensive planning. Through elicitation, intelligence Intelligence collectors may confirm or expand their knowledge of a sensitive program or may gain clear insight into a person's potential susceptibility to recruitment. Dumpster diving, and this is the technique used to retrieve information that could be used to carry out an attack on a computer network. Dumpster diving is not limited to simply searching through the trash for obvious treasures like access codes or passwords written down on sticky notes. Seemingly, innocent information like a phone list calendar or organization chart can be used to assist an attacker using social engineering techniques to gain access to the network. To limit the prospects of dumpster diving, paper shredders are shredding services. They should be employed to keep available data limited. Next, we have shoulder surfing. So a type of social engineering technique that is used to obtain information such as personal identification numbers, passwords, and other confidential data is by looking over the victim's shoulder either from keystrokes on the device or sensitive information being spoken and heard, which is also known as eavesdropping. And then we have whaling, and this is a specific type of phishing attack that targets high-profile employees, such as the CEO or CFO, in order to steal sensitive information from a company. In many whaling attacks, the attacker's goal is to manipulate the victim into authorizing high-value wire transfers to the attacker. Due to their highly targeted nature, whaling attacks are often more difficult to detect and prevent than standard phishing attacks. In the enterprise, security administrators can help reduce the effectiveness of whaling attacks by encouraging corporate management staff to undergo information security awareness training. So that was my quick little class on social engineering techniques. So let's go ahead and do some of this outstanding check on learning. So the first question is a social engineering technique whereby attackers under disguise of a legitimate request attempt to gain access to confidential information. This is commonly referred to as what? Is it phishing, privilege escalation, backdoor access, or shoulder surfing? So an attack under the disguise of a legit request to gain access to confidential confidential info. This is commonly known as this would be phishing. Next question. 
the practice of using a telephone system to manipulate a user into disclosing confidential information is known as what? Is this whaling, spear phishing, vishing, or farming? So using a telephone system to manipulate a user into disclosing confidential information, this is known as vishing or voice phishing. So vishing is the correct answer. And the final question is, what type of spam relies on text-based communication? Would this be farming, spam, smishing, or whaling? So what type of spam relies on text-based communication? And the answer is, this will be spam or spam over instant messaging. All right, so once again, that was my quick little class on social engineering techniques where we talked about everything from phishing to smishing, vishing, spam, spam, spear phishing, farming, tailgating, eliciting information, dumpster diving, shoulder surfing, and whaling. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Security Plus SY0-601 certification. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.